You're about to see the men and women of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office working at their task of making our community safer. You will also see the stories of crimes that have been committed. We are looking for these subjects. They are Jefferson's Most Wanted. When the men and women of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office go on watch to protect and serve the citizens of Jefferson Parish, the risk they face can be deadly and the margin for error small. Some of the officers fall in the line of duty. Their watch ended before their time. We honor these men and women on the anniversary of their final watch. Deputy Sheriff Robert Cochran was shot and killed on January 30th, 1978 during a bank robbery while working a special detail at a bank on Metro Road. One of the suspects entered the bank and observed Deputy Cochran. The suspect then exited the bank and informed the second suspect. The second suspect then entered the bank and immediately shot Deputy Cochran in the shoulder. As he fell to the ground, Deputy Cochran was able to return fire, striking the subject in the abdomen. The suspect then walked up to Deputy Cochran and shot him in the head, killing him. Both suspects were apprehended when the wounded man sought medical attention. The shooter was sentenced to death and eventually executed. The accomplice was sentenced to life in prison. Deputy Cochran was 32 at the time of his death and was survived by his wife, a son, and two daughters. One of the oldest commandments we are given is, Thou shalt not kill. This taboo is echoed by every religion and culture. Despite this, our parish has been afflicted with far too many murders. If we cannot prevent the commission of this crime through education and religion, we must see that those who commit murder are not free to kill again. On November 18, 2016, Alfred Hill was shot and killed in the 4200 block of La Couture Drive in Harvey, Louisiana. Charles Johnson, a black male, 25 years of age, has been identified as a perpetrator. Johnson is also known by the street name CB or Black. His last known address was 107 Hawkins Drive in Gretna. Charles Johnson is wanted by the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office on the charge of first degree murder. Anyone knowing Johnson's location is asked to contact Crime Stoppers or Detective Joseph Wagesback with the JPSO Homicide Section. On November 29, 2016, a burglary was committed at a residence in the 2300 block of Little Fowl Lane in Marrero, Louisiana by a subject identified as Chris Alvarado, a white male, 56 years of age. The subject removed tools from the structure but returned them after being confronted by a witness. Alvarado's last known address was 219 9th Street in Bridge City. There are no do-overs because you were caught in the commission of a crime. An apology or the return of stolen items does not excuse the crime. Chris Alvarado is wanted by the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office on burglary charges. Anyone knowing the location of Chris Alvarado is asked to contact Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or Detective Brad Stanifer with the JPSO burglary section at 364-5300. Information from citizens concerning crime is invaluable to the JPSO. If you have information concerning a murder, robbery, sexual assault, theft, or drug crime that has been committed in your neighborhood, call our hotline, 3-NO-DRUG or 366-3784. This recorded line will take the information from you anonymously, or if you wish to have someone contact you, provide your name and phone number. It's our community. Working together, we can keep it safe for everyone. Violence against women is never justified. When the crime is coupled with theft, the subject is an obvious danger to everyone. Sexual assault is not about sex, but power. The best way to prevent these crimes is to lock up the persons committing them. Keeping our parish safe is the responsibility of each of us. On October 7, 2016, at approximately 7 p.m., a black male produced a handgun and forced a female victim inside her residence. Once inside, he sexually assaulted the victim, stole property from the residence, and fled on foot towards Veterans Highway. 
A composite drawing of the suspect shows a black male, approximately 35 years of age, 6 feet in height, weighing 150 pounds with a thin build and a dark complexion. The subject has a distinctly crossed right eye. He was freshly shaven and wore a black hat with a white NY on the bill, a white t-shirt, dark blue jeans, and white tennis shoes. This subject is wanted by the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office on charges of sexual assault and burglary. Anyone knowing the identity of the suspect is asked to contact Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or Detective Gerald Young with the JPSO Personal Violence Section at 364-5300. You know, we ended last year on kind of a down note. Uh, and so I was determined to start off this year with some good news. And I just recently found out that not only you, but the entire sheriff's office is a shining star. What is that? Well, we were recognized by the Major County Sheriff's Association, which is a collection of uh, the largest uh, sheriff's departments in the country, um, which I am a member of. And uh, they gave uh, myself and the organization the designation of the shining star for the first quarter of February of uh, 2017, excuse me. Uh, based on our accomplishments. Uh, as you know, in 2016, we posted another 5% reduction in crime, which uh, led us to have the lowest crime rate year in 2016 since 1974 in Jefferson Parish. Um, we kind of set the mark in a number of things that we do from a law enforcement perspective strategically as it relates to any number of programs that we've in implemented over the years that have uh, uh, yielded uh, successful results for us in fighting crime and part of that is what we've been recognized for as well. Um, in fact, we are looked upon as setting the mark nationally in many of the things that we do and are asked to uh, conduct symposiums and training throughout the country uh, for the benefit of law enforcement officers everywhere. Let's talk about the things you do. Um, I've heard you say this before, but um, the terminology was a little different this time. You said that law enforcement should be more concerned with why than with what. What's our outcomes? Um, what we need to be concerned with is why the outcome. Uh, so when we talk about incarceration, for example, that our incarceration rates in Louisiana are very, very high, that's an outcome. Uh, we have to dig down to find out why that outcome. Uh, the fact of the matter is we have too many offenders, simply put. Then it begs another question, why too many offenders? So you always have to be focusing on the why. And those are the things that drive the outcomes. It's too easy, and I say this all the time about soundbite politicians, that just start talking about outcomes and never focus on, on the why. Yeah. Uh, the, let, let's just uh, clarify this. The people committing the crimes are a small percent of the population, but they're committing most of the crimes. It, you know, there's been a series of studies going back to the late 1950s that uh, started out that uh, said that 6% of the population was responsible for 75% of violent crime. Uh, those numbers have been adjusted. RAND has conducted a number of studies uh, through the 70s, 80s, 90s, and into the 2000s, and now that number is somewhere between uh, 9 and 10 percent of the population is responsible uh, for 75 percent of violent crime. So, yes, it is a, a smaller number, and so what we do is we focus on that 9 to 10 percent of people because those are the impact criminals, those are the ones that you want to selectively incapacitate. And as if, if you always have your eye on them, you'll be able to continue to drive crime down. All right, I'm going to continue to parse your words, because I heard you say this recently. You said that it used to be the uh, pattern that uh, organization was vertical. And now you want a horizontal ver uh, organization in the uh, sheriff's office. Well, you know, most law enforcement organizations uh, pattern themselves after the military. And the military was very much a vertical organization where they each had their discipline within a silo. Uh, and.
the reality is, is that because there are so many types of crimes that actually fuel other types of crime, we need to become more horizontal, where we're taking ownership of all crime. And although we are divided up into silos, we need to cross-pollinate across those silos to share information, to develop strategies together, because we know that people steal other people's property in order to support a drug habit. So those working in narcotics need to work with those in burglary section or the auto theft section or working in the theft cases because there's a strong nexus and connection. Uh, a lot of organizations are so silo driven it prevents them from communicating. So I've spent the vast majority of the time since I've been sheriff trying to redistribute this organization, change it culturally to, make, to think about it in a horizontal fashion as opposed to a vertical fashion. Okay. Um, it's amazing to me that in February you celebrate 40 years in law enforcement. You must have started when you were like, what, five, nine? <laughs> Well, I started right out of high school. You know, I just made 59 years of age, and I started at 18. And um, I've been in this uh, business, and it was completely by accident. Um, I, you know, wanted to be an oceanographer, and decided to stay at home and and go to school, and and ended up working for the sheriff's office in Orleans Parish, and and fell in love with uh, giving back to the community. Um, you know, and knowing that I could make a difference, and it's something that I, I fell into, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it over all these years. Are you looking at an uh, end date, or is it still day by day, as long as it's fun? You know, I still know that I can make a difference. I mean, everybody comes to a crossroads in their career, uh, you know, when's enough enough, and when is it time to pass it on uh, to someone else. Uh, effective leaders uh, know when it's time to leave. Um, you know, and you spend time, uh, and we spend a lot of time in the sheriff's office about succession planning, uh, because that's what effective leaders do, uh, and uh, because you always want the organization to go on. I'm just a, a, a fiduciary that holds all of this for a short period of time. Uh, it's not really about me. Uh, it's about the entity, and we talk about that a lot in our organization, that the entity's interest always outweighs the individual's. And if you focus on that day in and day out and what you do, the entire culture of the organization will be better served. You know, um, we get enamored of our position sometimes, but I think it's good to remember that this is a temp job. It you really is. You do this for a while and then you're going to move on. It absolutely is. And if you keep it in its proper perspective, uh, not only you, but the organization will not run amok. Uh, I've been trying to avoid anything unpleasant, but this program, we're honoring three of our deputies who uh, made their final watch, and uh, we have another funeral to go to. Young man starting his career, husband, father, ex-Marine, and uh, I think he was only on the job for about a year in West Wego, and he was you know, tragically killed. Um, West Wego Officer Michael Luviak. Um, you know, doing the right thing at, at the right time and for the right reason, uh, helping people, um, probably didn't know, had no idea what was about to happen, didn't really understand what he had come across, thought it was a traffic accident. I went to that scene, that's what it looked like to me as well. Um, and unfortunately, that series of events led to his tragic death. All too often, as I'm in the community, I'm asked, you know, uh, why, how did this happen, when is it going to change? Um, these are good questions, but they're not answers that are going to be provided by political leadership. The answers are going to be provided by the community uh, and the impact of the community. Um, all too often, though, we are engaged in a dialogue that is not supported by the underlying empirical data. And if we're going to change our view uh, in this society, uh, there's two uh, slogans that I like to use. Keep it real and just do it. And the fact of the matter is, is that if we hold true to those two slogans, 
we will find solutions, but when we fall prey to smoke screens and uh, diversion and uh, political ideologies, um, we're not going to solve any of these problems. Yeah, keep your eye on the goal and uh, not on the periphery. Uh, sorry, I had a little uh, end on a sour note, but thanks for a few minutes of your time, Sheriff. Thank you. Lieutenant Curtis Denton was shot and killed with his own weapon while attempting to stop three suspects from stealing a car from his apartment complex parking lot at 3 a.m. on January 25, 1989. The suspects were able to overpower Lieutenant Denton, gain control of his 357 revolver, and shoot him. One of the suspects was later shot and killed by police. The two other suspects joined the military as part of their sentence. Lieutenant Denton, 44, at the time of his death, and had been with the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office for 23 years. Computers have become a vital part of society and consequently a prime target for theft. Stores selling computers are targeted because they offer distractions that can be useful to the thief. These stores also have surveillance cameras and we ask you to watch the following story and help make the stolen computer equipment more expensive for the subject. On December 27th, 2016 at approximately 12.39 a.m., the black male subject seen in the store video surveillance camera smashed the front window of the Sprint store located in the 4,000 block of Veterans Highway. He entered the store and stole several Apple products valued at over $3,000. He then fled on foot. The subject was wearing a dark hoodie sweatshirt with the letter G and grambling on his clothing and also camouflage shorts. 
Anyone knowing the identity of this subject is asked to contact Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or Lieutenant Kevin Kluot with the JPSO Burglary Section. Large box stores are another favorite target of thieves because their size seems to make stealing easier. The people who run these stores know that, which is why video cameras are all over the site. On December 21st, 2016, at approximately 8.27 a.m., the unknown black male seen in the store video surveillance camera entered the Walmart in Marrero, Louisiana, concealed a liquid platinum laptop computer under his clothing, then walked out of the store without paying for it. Anyone knowing the identity of the subject is asked to contact Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or Detective Ray Gorman with the JPSO Criminal Intelligence Center at 875-3300. On January 24, 1996, Deputy Sheriff Steve Newitt was killed when his motorcycle collided with the back of a vehicle as he was driving south on Clearview Parkway. At the crest of an overpass, the sun went into his eyes, rendering him unable to see the vehicles ahead. Striking the back of the last car in traffic, he was thrown over the top. It is believed he was killed instantly upon striking the pavement. Deputy Newitt was 34 at the time of his death. He had served with the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office for eight years and in law enforcement for 11 years. If you suspect child abuse or are a victim of child abuse, please contact the JPSO Personal Violence Unit at 364-5362 or our partners at the Jefferson Children's Advocacy Center who provide services critical to helping our office investigate and prevent child abuse in our community. If you have questions or if you're in need of their services, Called Erica Dupepe, JCAC Director, at 364-3857. Our Economic Crimes Unit is charged with finding subjects who are abusing credit cards. Though modern technology has made it easier for criminals to clone or counterfeit credit cards, technology also provides a way to identify these suspects. The investigation of such crimes is now area-wide through the Criminal Intelligence Center. Store video at Bed Bath & Beyond in Mandeville caught one subject on tape. We ask your help in identifying him. On December 23, 2016, the black male subject seen in the store video surveillance camera entered the Bed Bath & Beyond in Mandeville, Louisiana and purchased approximately $800 in merchandise using a counterfeit credit card. Anyone knowing the identity of this subject is asked to contact Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or Detective Jason Redo with the Mandeville Police Department at 985-624-3119. The Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office partners with the FBI and law enforcement. We were fortunate to have Special Agent in Charge Jeffrey Sillette visit us recently to give us an insight as to how the Federal Bureau of Investigation functions. Our jurisdiction comes from, and now there's a term, we are all special agents, right? In federal government, all of our uh, folks that work in federal law enforcement, our 1811s, are special agents. And the special agent is we are specially designated to enforce the laws that we are charged with. So in the FBI, it's a vast amount of laws that we are charged with enforcing. Um, the element that goes into federal statutes that gives us jurisdiction is the interstate element. Um, so uh, murder is not a federal statute, like a local murder. But there can be murders which can be investigated federally if it relates to interstate commerce and how we operate. So if you murdered somebody in a bank, um, we can investigate that as, you know, a murder, um, a, a, you know, violent, a violent murder that occurred in a federal, in, uh, federally um, insured institution. We have the ability to be involved in any bank robbery, bank burglary, or any crime that is committed on a, uh, you know, the, the federally insured institution. That being said, you know, I think the old days, as you're describing, you know, the, 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 the Tommy guns and kicking the doors in and we're here to help, um, law enforcement and intelligence is a team effort. It's a team sport and it's collaborative, meaning um, we are very proud of the relationships we have in the state of Louisiana. We work very effectively on a daily basis with state and locals. Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office specifically is one of our greatest partners when it comes to contributing to our task forces. They're on our violent crimes task force. 
they're on our gang task force, they're on our joint terrorism task force, um, and we work regularly, jointly with Jefferson Parish. Um, we also work, and, and again, our, our joint terrorism task force has over 67 members throughout the state of Louisiana. So what we do is a team effort. The FBI, the days of us coming in and saying, don't worry, we've got this, um, are long in the past. Um, when we're working, we work together with people. Um, we don't need an invitation to come to the party, but we do typically work in the way that we do come with an invitation to the party, meaning you know, there, are, there are, is a violent crime incident in, the state, in, in New Orleans. It's something that we will engage with with the New Orleans Police Department. They will ask for assistance. Um, do we have to have that? The answer is no. Oh, okay. But we don't have to have an invitation. That's not part of how our jurisdiction works. Um, that being said, we like to work together as a team. Intelligence is one of our functions. So we have what's called the Directorate of, uh, of Intelligence, which is a function post 9-11 for the Bureau. So one of the major criticisms of the 9-11 Commission report is, was the failure of the U.S. Uh, intelligence community to effectively share intelligence. Um, and that went from a internally within the federal government and externally with our state and local partners. So in the New Orleans division, I have a intelligence branch. Our intelligence branch generates or gets information from all of the investigations that we are working. Um, and then they also proactively work with other organizations to accumulate intelligence. The objective of intelligence-based policing or intelligence-based law enforcement is to make sure we're identifying threats on the front end <coughs> and preventing actions versus waiting for them to happen. So it's, all right, where should we put our resources? If everything's a priority, then nothing's a priority. So based on the intelligence, what's the threat that we need to be attacking? And then how do we attack it most efficiently by looking at the intelligence and working with that intelligence to attack the problem? An armed robber is a danger on many levels. The presence of a weapon increases a chance that it will be used. Clerks in retail stores are unable to defend themselves in such situations. But video surveillance provides law enforcement information and you, our partners, in keeping our parish a safe place to raise a family. You can do your part by assisting in the identification of the suspect. On Tuesday, December 27, 2016, at approximately 2.30 p.m., an unknown white male armed with a handgun can be seen in the store video surveillance camera as he robbed the Cash America pawn shop on the Palco Boulevard. The suspect fled on foot after obtaining cash from some business. Anyone knowing the identity of this subject is asked to contact Crime Stoppers or Lieutenant Kevin Balser with the JPSO robbery section at 364-5300. Crime Stoppers introduces a new way to report crime tips with our Tip Submit app, available for iPhone and Android phones. It's the newest and easiest way to submit secure and anonymous tips to Crime Stoppers. Tipsters can upload photos, video, and may even receive a cash reward without anyone ever knowing their identity. Download the free Crime Stoppers app by searching Tip Submit at the App Store and follow the simple steps to your phone or mobile device to Crime Stoppers GNO. With Crime Stoppers, it's safe, secure, and anonymous. So download the Tip Submit app today and become a mobile Crime Stopper. The Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office works every day to keep our streets safe. To be effective, we need citizens as committed as we are. Here are the images of the persons who are currently Jefferson's most wanted. Wanted by the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office on the charge of first-degree murder in the shooting of Alfred Hill in the 4200 block of Black Couture Drive in Harvey, Louisiana. 
Johnson is also known by the street name CB or Black. Anyone knowing Johnson's location is asked to contact Crime Stoppers or Detective Joseph Waggis Pack with the JPSO Homicide Section. Attention, Chris Alvarado, a white male 56 years of age, is wanted by the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office on burglary charges. The subject removed tools from a residence in the 2300 block of Little Flower Lane in Marrero, Louisiana, but returned them after being confronted by a witness. Anyone knowing the location of Chris Alvarado is asked to contact Crime Stoppers at 822-1111 or Detective Brad Stanifer with the JPSO burglary section at 364-5300.